And welcome to my first attempt at a video vlog. All I'm going to be doing is showing you what I do all day. Well, every day, but today at least. What I've been doing is, for the past few days, creating in a computer program, Magic the Gathering cards. Stuff I'm making, they aren't official cards, so you can't use them in a tournament or something like that, but they're great for personal use. Uh, basically, you just make them, print them, and then slice them, and then you can utilize them in any deck that you want. Um, you want to make sure that they look the same as the rest of the cards in the deck, so either you print out a lot of them, or you get little sh or whatever you want to call them of uh, basically little packets that you can slide the cards into. You slide one of these custom cards in and you use say some spare land or whatever other cards that you have that are lying around that are spare and you slide those in behind and it covers up the back of the custom cards. It makes them nice and easy. You can also get the little card sleeves that have a black back and those are even better to use because then it doesn't matter you don't have to use any other cards and you can use whatever card you want because they're all the same size they'll all fit and they'll all slide into that sleeve and they're all good to go those are the ones that I personally recommend if you want to use custom cards I don't have any of those so I, I don't know anyways biggest advantage to printing out your own cards. If you want to use rares or ultra rares or legendaries that you would have to normally risk actual physical money to get in a set, you don't with this. You just say, oh, I want that card. Put it on there. Print cards. Get tons of cards and do whatever you want to with them. Uh, you could even alter the text. You can alter the image you can do whatever you want to with them really um, I personally made a full set and I'm making more sets basically an expansion pack random cards that seem to go together simply because they use all similar images well, not really basically my qualification for similar images was most of them came from video games say screenshots or uh, fan art. I edited that down whatnot for pretty much everything for them. Other than that, all the cards are custom. Nothing is official magic cards from what I can tell. I will show you exactly what I do with them as far as cutting, what they look like when you're slicing them, what they look like when they're printed out. Um, you can probably see my computer screen in the back there. It's high enough resolution, you might actually see that there's videos up there. This is not my first attempt at this first video. I've done several of them before. They all sucked. Well, sort of. Like some of my gestures and so on and so forth and some of them, but I'm not going to edit. I don't want to edit. Don't want to edit. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's that. Yeah. <laughs> On to the slicing. And my black magic candle. I should have it lit. Then the fan would blow it out. Oh. Here's what it looks like. Nine card sheet. 67 pound cardstock. What I personally recommend the tan, not the white, mainly because it comes out really nice. The big problem with printing them out is the cost of the ink, and because it uses so much ink to get them to this high quality, you can usually go through a packet of ink that's one black ink cartridge, one color ink cartridge, after about 25-30 sheets. And 
and considering that's 30 bucks, that puts these at about uh, about 60, about two thirds of the price of actual magic cards that you would purchase at the store. But then again, you can make whatever cards you want. Pick and choose. It's your choice. No restrictions. Unlike when you go into the store, in which case you just have to get whatever you get. So for slicing, first off, you slice off this fair stuff. Comes over into this pile. You slice in between. Comes out into these. Then slice off what remains. And slice them between. And you've got your cards. I don't print anything on the back there's really no reason to. Part of the reason for using cardstock, heavy cardstock, is that you can't see through it, even when you print out at the high quality, which kind of soaks it in the ink. Because of that, you can't tell what it is through it. So you can use clear sleeves for the cards if you want, or you can use the black back one or whatever colored back leaves and it really doesn't matter because you can't tell what's through them properly. I say properly as in that's what is proper for them and just when slicing them just have to make sure that it's right lined up. You don't want to have them even a half a millimeter off because you can see a half a millimeter from the back and when you do, you can tell exactly which card it is. Half a millimeter difference in your deck, you can see the underlying card. And that will allow you to know exactly which card you have. So you could nick the corner of, say, a planeswalker, and you would know that that would be what card it is every time it shows up in your deck. And you can use that to your advantage sometimes. So I recommend not doing that just simply because it's not as fun. Anyways, so that's what I do. This has been my first attempt at a video blog. Hopefully it turns out all right, not too annoying. Uh, if I seem like I suck at speaking, it's probably because I do. If it seems like I'm great at speaking, it's probably because I am. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm both at the same time. That's just who I am. Uh, review this. Tell me what it sounds like, smells like, tastes like, whatever. Uh, but take it easy on me. My first attempt. All right. Later, dudes.